Welcome back Wolfpack, Verlus here, and it's time for the kinda once a year channel update because things have been weird with YouTube and Pokemon Scarlet Violet. Things have been even weirder with social media and the rest of the world because of all the blacklists and corruption that has been controlling our lives. So this stuff affects you and it also greatly affects me as a content creator, the future of the channel, and content creation. So that is what we're going to be talking about. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with the friends, and definitely now is the time if you're a lurker to comment your thoughts down below so every once in a while I do one of these kinds of videos just kind of get a gauge as to how people are feeling and what's going on and just kind of like catch everyone up with you know dislike botting keeping all my content suppressed and other weirdness that's going on and in this video I forgot there was an experiment that was going on with YouTube over four years ago because YouTube been broken for a very long time where this is also a reminder to unsub and then resub because that has a weird effect of you know refreshing notifications and then like unbreaking the channel if you're not seeing enough of my content so that's also a reminder to kind of catch up on from time to time then kind of go deeper into what's going on so yeah all the twitter file stuff is pretty crazy people are wondering when are you going to be back on twitter what's your plans for twitter uh elon musk said he's going to make it like a better content creation platform than youtube and youtube is such an inorganic hellhole that if any amount of fair discovery is allowed then yeah i'm just gonna have a better time on twitter as a content creator and then that's just it's gonna be like old youtube but on twitter instead because we need a new platform to kill the shit that twitter not twitter to kill the shit that youtube has become and going to the twitter files it seems like that kind of got in the way of amnesty but i'm okay with it because i'm ungaslit at this point it's not only twitter doing this it's every social media especially Google and YouTube, and this is also coming into the Section 230 reform that's looking to, like, get into Congress and stuff. So, if this is used to, like, wreck Section 230 protections, then that means YouTube is also going to be a much different place because of the algorithm just randomly recommending people. Can't be that way, so it looks like searching and fair ranking of content could come back as a result of that. All of the censorship, all of the manual throttling of YouTube content, and that's something that's been going on for years. Nerd City covering it over half a decade ago. So I mean, the way I consider it, YouTube hasn't been good since 2016, early 2017, and then my theory is that it lines up with Leafy is here. Like, after Leafy organically took over the platform, YouTube said, nah, that can never happen again, and then a lot of other political stuff started surfacing and that information started getting around and YouTube didn't like it so then it got completely cracked down but even before then there were tags secret hidden tags to throttle your content on YouTube and you know it's only gotten worse no matter how much YouTube lies about it I have documented proof from YouTube support that they have just blatantly lied to me or contradicted themselves I'm also eager to see if lawyers start jumping onto this for class action lawsuits or specific malice and breach of contract cases. So that's going to be something I'm going to be looking into. If I have a lawyer in my audience, at least give me guidance on who to talk to or where to start going in that direction if the possibility is there. Because it's really seeming like it with how negligent these companies have been behaving while just blatantly lying to Congress and the public. So Twitter's had these tags for a while. We know YouTube has these tags. And that means like if all this stuff goes away, I get my Twitter back when Elon figures out how to actually roll out amnesty or a new review procedure for suspended accounts and then enables a content creation platform. Yeah, that's that's kind of where things will be going. Then, you know, the side content, like Twitter primary, then just upload to YouTube on the side and kind of see how that goes. Kind of like how there's main Twitch streamers that just upload their highlights to YouTube and both are very successful. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on, but this weird stuff proves how inorganic and terrible YouTube has become and everyone's feeling it when it comes to the algorithm. Unless you are actually a bad actor, you cannot succeed on YouTube. So it's a complete failing of YouTube's enforcement of their own policies. The follow the audience algorithm only floats up content to the most fraudulent and clickbaiting of creators. And yeah, if, you're, if you aren't trying to take control and manipulate children, you can't really succeed when, at least when it comes like Pokemon and gaming. We also see this like five minute crafts constantly getting exposed for harmful and dangerous acts, but never getting punished. So it's just an inorganic hellhole on YouTube. And that's also why things have just been weirder when it comes to Pokemon, because now it's warped inorganic content that's driving the community interest for what's going on with Pokemon. And the result of that is that no one 
cares about competitive, at least in the West. Like, it's super weird. I was doing Battle Stadium Battles, and out of 60 battles, I think I went up against two English players, five non-Asian players, and for most of that, I was playing in prime time. I was playing 4, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I even started up a stream at 9 a.m. because that's 2 a.m. Japanese time, and I was only getting Japanese players. So the West is just completely broken right now when it comes to any desire to be competitive. That's also why the channel did so strong back in the day, because people weren't so fragile. They weren't so weak. They weren't so unmotivated. The current state of society has turned a lot of people into losers that don't want to strive for anything, therefore they're just watching fake debates on Twitch all day long, or just chatting softcore porn because they can't amount to anything, and that's because of the direction that Twitter and other large social media platforms have been driving people towards. Now unfortunately, this isn't going to get better in a short amount of time, even with Elon fixing the platform and trying to like, reverse the flow of what has been going on in culture, because this has been a decade of identity politics, social justice, and wokeness just kind of ruining people. So it's going to it's going to be a long tide, but at least it feels like there is a reversal. That also means that the bad actors that were able to exploit the system, exploit these people that were being controlled by social media the entire time, they are still going to have a foothold and that's also still going to have influences in all aspects of society. So it's like, yeah, the bad actors that climbed in gaming and Pokemon I'm the only honest and real Poketuber that isn't out there trying to cheat, that isn't out there trying to exploit children, and since that just became the way that everything was for content creators and everyone being fake, you know, it's going to take a while for people to wake up to that and understand what's going on. And that's had a weird effect that I didn't anticipate this year, because I've had more people than ever DMing me on how they can donate to me directly because YouTube takes a cut and they don't want to support YouTube. They don't want anyone taking a cut. They want to give me straight up money for Christmas or something like that. And I've never had comments like that. I've, I've had like some core people that are like, yo, you want some money for Christmas or I'll be doing a stream and they donate and say Merry Christmas. But no, I'm getting a crazy amount of people that are just DMing me or joining the Discord or like trying to contact me directly like, yo, I really want to support you right now. And that's kind of where things have been going. You can see that. We have Mug Club with Steven Crowder. We have Timcast News for their like membership uh, sections and stuff, even locals. So the reality right now is that you can't realize your full earnings potential like you used to. You can make videos, that video would perform on its own merit, and then the ad revenue was more than enough to float the content, float the creator. That just doesn't happen anymore because of demonetization and adpocalypse stuff. Now that isn't affecting me, but all of the tags and censorship and dislike botting and manual throttling of my channel, I've been like falsely blacklisted at the very least from all of these hate raids and attack campaigns. And since YouTube doesn't give a fuck about any of their creators, we're just kind of like, it's just not the same. However, that's also not like, well, I fell off, therefore everyone's doing better. In a competitive way, no one's striving to compete anymore when it comes to Pokemon, which is weird because this is the most accessible competitive generation. Asterisk, Terra types kind of make it ugly. But even then, we have like the most desirable movesets and content just doing nothing compared to even previous generations. But even going back to just three years ago with Pokemon Sword and Shield, more people were interested in competitive. More people were interested in actually battling and competing and looking up movesets for Pokemon. And you can even like really just feel it. And even in that time, socially, you can feel the escalation of people losing drive and society just becoming more helpless and weak as also identity politics get more and more out of control, and then like reasonable people, they don't want to deal with any of that stuff. So that's kind of like another weird thing that goes back to the last update I did that was called an observation. It's not that people leave my channel and hate me and unsub. That does happen, but it's maybe 10% of the people. 90% of my core audience, they just grow up. They leave Pokemon and become successful. They don't want to deal with the internet anymore because it just gets overwhelming at a certain point and just not worth it. And then they want to actually do something with their lives. And that either means just kind of like distancing from this or again, just growing out of Pokemon in general, even though they never had anything against me or my content. And then we can see by comparison, the generation before 
three years before then that the competitive drive for Pokemon and looking up movesets and also wanting to participate in the games, because it's not even that. People don't even want to participate in the games they're paying $60 for that have more gameplay and quality of life than ever before. It's weird. While also getting like more sales than ever. And even going back to that time frame, we have way more people interested in playing Pokemon, learning about Pokemon, and then competing inside the games and putting work into the games. It took more work to actually be competitive in these games, but people were still driven to do it. And if you've been around since Pokemon X and Y, you can really feel it. Pokemon X and Y being that renaissance of Pokemon, people wanting to play and engage, and then it dropping off more and more, even though Pokemon sales are going up and up. So it just kind of like shows this weirdness of what social media has done to warp the younger generations and how they engage with games and content now, and just really weird. So that core interest is down, and these people that have just been so manipulated by the algorithms or have just become NPCs and stupid from the garbage that they've been consuming by not having any real-world experience, by not being able to develop critical thinking skills and understanding that, like, everything that they're exposed to is just fake. So we get this cascading effect where it's not even like you can make the argument that, oh, you're only complaining because your channel's dead and you fell off. That would be true if this had 10 times the views, you know, if this was comparable to previous generations or was actually setting records for viewership that we haven't seen in Pokemon before. But all the builds are down super low, and if you scroll enough, you actually start to find the depravity that we're getting into and how weird all of these people have just kind of become by being warped through social media. Like, okay, no one wants to play competitive, but... These, these freaks want mommy Meowskareta content. Like I said, it's about consuming fake content, softcore porn, depravity, and just all kinds of weird things instead of actually trying to play the game and accomplish things because that's just what social media has done to people somehow. So now we can kind of get to the bombshell of this video, and I don't know how I'm going to tie it in because like, we have maybe 10% of people watching at this point, but that means we get to like the core of the core of the core of my audience that can actually give me the proper insight and input about this. Because what I'm thinking about doing is making all the movesets for Generation 9 still, but making all of the videos members only. I kind of experimented this with the uh, Claude Zyre video, just kind of see like how my video still ranked and how the discoverability of that works. Like you click on a video and that says you need to be a member and then you join and all that stuff. So I'm thinking that's going to be the way to go because Social media is broken, like I said, all this corruption and blacklisting and secret tags and throttling and stuff has kind of broken that, but also the people are broken, so this content doesn't have the same transactional nature, where it's you watch the ad and then you either get entertainment or knowledge value, but the production and sustainability of distributing that knowledge is offset by enough interest and then ad revenue generation and stuff like that. Honestly, I was inspired by seeing like what LS has done, that he has paywalled a tier list for the new patch going into the new season because he is one of the top analysts in League of Legends and he understands the value behind the content that he puts out. That this genuinely helps people, therefore there is a value proposition to make it worth it. And you're not paying $5 for just this tier list, you're paying $5 for the access to his higher tier content. So you're not just paying $2 or whatever price I decide to land on for the members only videos, you're paying $2 for the entire library. And it's only $2 per month for what's going to end up being like 50 videos or something. And it kind of like tweaks and makes the ad revenue stuff kind of weird because the 50-ish dollars that this video has made, well, that's offset by 25 people becoming a member. Now I don't see the full cut, but you know, like, so if this video drives 30 people into joining as a member for also the other membership perks, like joining the Discord and then getting access to the other content, and then if I get a lot of memberships, then that means more members only content. So if there's a drive to that, 30 people offset 11,000 that are barely hanging on in a disinterested community. That everything has become so corrupt and broken and algorithmically controlled and inorganic online is that you kinda have to take your bag because it's more unstable and broken than ever before. And that was the problem back in 2016 when I was the number one performing YouTuber on the platform before the dislike botting just completely shut me out and then all the other corruption and manual throttling and stuff really kicked in. You know, I didn't take my bag. I got exploited hard. I just wanted to have fun playing Pokemon and the ad revenue was certainly more than enough. But even the sponsorships I had at the time, they used me 
and did not pay me even close to what I was worth and didn't even offer to because they knew they could get away with it. So I didn't even like try to find my value there because I didn't see the point in it because money was so good, but should have taken my bag, especially with things getting worse. Now it's not to say that YouTube is unsustainable for me, that doing what I'm doing now, making close to six figures, used to be a reliable six figures, but now it's still like very livable amounts of money, but it's one of those things where it always feels bad to just leave money on the table, that if you could do something different and then optimize and get 30% more earnings, which then translates to thousands of dollars more a month, you know, it's one of those things that is tempting. I've, I've done my best to not be corrupted by greed, not do anything that I think is dishonest in the sake of money or exploiting people. But now that's why I mean we're starting to get into value, that you're seeing other professionals really kind of need this as a way of just kind of saying like, now I'm getting the value that I'm worth out of it because everything else is being rigged. Like keeping the movesets free still works out for me just fine. I put out a video, it makes 40, 50 bucks, and then it's evergreen and is always generating small amounts of ad revenue with the rest of the library, plus the content I've made, plus my existing videos, I'm still doing fine. That's why I want to throw out this idea to give more incentment to membership joins, especially because I'm seeing more people want to financially support me directly now than ever, because I'm the only one or I'm like one of the few people that they can respect for just not changing and holding up to their values and trying to stay strong when it'd be so easy to sell out, so easy to cave and be a part of all the garbage that got us here, like every other PokeTuber and, and like 90 eight percent of other influencers and even then like i don't want to take a greedy view on it which is why i'm trying to like keep my membership cost low where it's like two dollars to become a member and i'd honestly rather have a thousand people supporting me at two dollars than 500 people supporting me at five dollars a month so i'd rather have more people paying smaller amounts to generate me less money overall because i just it's about volume support than actually getting more money from whales and stuff i'm whales make me uncomfortable which is why like the whole streaming thing is also crazy where it's like don't give me a hundred dollars i guess maybe for christmas and like a one-time thing for the year like y you need that money too my guy but if it's just kind of like hey you turn on a two dollar donation and then forget about it for five years that sounds about fair however that could also make things very unmanageable in discord because we try to keep it sane in there and it's easy for trolls to drop a couple bucks and then ruin things and then Trying to keep it legit and civil is very difficult when it comes to Discord. So you get a thousand people in there, even no matter how many mods you have, that's just going to go to hell. So I'm thinking like $2 membership for the move sets, and then 3 or $4 for like move sets plus Discord. So I don't know. It's, it's I have to like think about the numbers or get your guys' feedback on it because like maybe you can just join Wolfpack right now for two dollars that gets you into discord but then there's a separate two dollar tier for just move sets and then like a bundled tier or something and then maybe i'll just make like a fine if you want to give me the money kind of tier just a thought not hard committing to anything just yet especially because yeah again section 230 could get spooky for google and youtube who knows how long it's going to take for the content stuff on twitter i'm not planning on content gating my twitter i just hope that the new twitter content platform becomes similar to old YouTube where you can actually do what you want. You can make the content you want and then you get that natural organic viewership and growth and it's all fair. Like I just need a fair and honest platform to put my content on and then I don't really like care about feeling like I need to extract more value out of it. But until then, now it's like, well, to get the most worth and more and most like personal passion and interest out of it. Cause at this point I'm not doing the moveset guides for myself like I normally do. I'm doing it for you guys. But it gets harder to make the content for the people when there's less people that actually care and want the content for whatever reasons. Like I know we still have like thousands of people and like core audience that really are down with this especially because they want to compete and they want to utilize it and they want to that that's why they're here. They want the best competitive advice so they can grow and then beat other people. And I have enough motivation and responsibility to you guys to get this out there and like just keep doing what I do because this beats flipping burgers. It, it will always beat flipping burgers to play Pokemon for a living and make more money pretty much no matter how bad things get. Asterisk. So yeah, like I, I can keep doing that. I just, I prefer to have fun and I prefer to not feel like too obligated to something even though like for completionist sake, I'm also like self-motivated in that way to where I want to learn a bit more, but things have just been messier and I'm more just kind of like waiting to see on the future now because it's weird. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Don't worry, everything's fine. I pulled in pretty solid revenue just from insane amounts of works with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet 
and I'm more hopeful for the future than I have been in the last five years because of what Elon Musk is doing to the culture war and also potentially giving creators a fair ad revenue outlet. So we're going to see how that goes, but it's going to be a little clunky until we get there. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.